Welcome everyone. This is Utsav, Head of Networking at Rotex International. We are starting on time, so we are punctual, even though I'm in Miami. Uh, Rotex, uh, I would like to uh, invite you, uh, welcome you to our webinar, How Rotex and Our White Turn You Into a Leader, uh, by Brittany Arthur and Dr. Todd Jenkins, also known as Bota Todd in the Rotary community. Uh, to begin with, what is RYE, Rotex, and Rotex International? What is RYE? Rotary Youth Exchange is a study abroad program provided by Rotary to build peace one young person at a time. Students get to learn a new language, discover another culture, and truly become global citizens at a young age. What is Rotex? Rotex is an alumni. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, did not mean to do that. Continue, please. Rotex is an alumni association. We can't hear you. To enhance their experience with in, in partnership with Rotarians. And Rotex International is an international organization that enhances experience with experience, connecting and guiding clubs worldwide that work with uh, so that their work with RYE community is well supported, executed, ever adapting to shared best practices and in accordance with Rotary values. Why did we choose this topic today? Uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, Rotex, Rotex International, RYE, please ask us and we'll share it with you. Uh, why did we choose this topic today? I will share a little bit about what I'm doing and then you'll get an idea on why Brittany and Arthur, uh, Brittany Arthur and Todd Jenkins are the experts on this topic. I am from Mumbai, India, and uh, I study in Miami currently at Florida International University. I study international business and logistics and supply chain management. Uh, and I've done two study abroad programs, one in France through Rotary Youth Exchange and one in Germany with uh, university study abroad in Bihar University. And uh, I've worked with, uh, I've, worked, I've done internships in logistics companies in India. And currently I'm working at the French American Chamber of Commerce in Miami. And I get to practice my French that I learned during my exchange here in France. And uh, this summer, I got a summer internship with a German company that was founded in the German university where I did my exchange and they have a subsidiary in Miami and I got internship there, but it got canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. But all of these experience, there is something at the back that I haven't shared with you all yet. It's the Rotex experience. After I did my Rotary Youth Exchange in France, uh, I realized the selflessness of Rotarians to support the Rotary Youth Exchange community to make our exchange the best year of our life. So when I went back to India, I wanted to do the same, and I started working with Rotex. For, the la for three years, I've worked at Mumbai chapter in various positions, uh, event, event management president, and then I got elected as a board member at Rotex International uh, when, I came to, uh, when I got elected in Taiwan Convention. During this time with Rotex, I have learned a lot, soft, a lot of soft skills, networking, communication, leadership, negotiations, and a lot of other things. And how can I put this to use with my education and use it professionally? is the question. And for that, Brittany and Todd are here to guide us through that. And I assume you all have similar questions after your youth exchange or during your participation with Rotex. Over to you, Todd. Hey, thank right. you so much. We're so excited. Thank you all for having us, Rotex International. Um, so just to kind of let you all know how we're gonna have our Discussion today. It's going to be more of a conversation uh, with Brittany and I. So Brittany um, is going to share her screen and um, kind of guide us through the points, but uh, we're just going to introduce ourselves, tell a little bit about ourselves while we're here, um, and really we're just going to walk through some tips and some things that we want to just leave you all with um, as you guys prepare for your professional life or wherever you're at um, in the Rotary um, leadership, because we see that we have a diverse audience today. We have Rotarians, we have youth exchange students, we have Rotex, we have potential youth exchange students and study abroad 
um, colleagues that's across the world. Um, and for you all uh, who may not know what Rotary is, most of us, I would say 98 or 99% of us call me, uh, or shouldn't know what Rotary is, but just for you all to know, Rotary is a global organization with over 1.2 million volunteers across the world. It's an organization with a global mindset and local action. So we do a lot of service, organiz uh, service projects locally and across the world. And you should um, definitely look into, I'm pretty sure you have a, a local Rotary Club in your area um, uh, or Rotex Club, Rotaract, Interact. However, um, if you don't have one, we can talk after this call how you can start one. So, um, but uh, for all who may not know, I'm, I'm Todd. They call me Dr. Bowtie Todd. I don't know why, uh, but um, I would say that I, I am extremely humble and honored to be invited as a guest speaker. Um, I am currently one of the youngest district chairs um, to do Rotary Youth Exchange Program. And so um, we're based out of Arkansas. We have Arkansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and a little Kansas in my district. Um, and so I manage our Youth Exchange Program with an incredible team. And of course, very involved in Rotary um, international experience and also worked and studied at University of Capinas in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil as well as did um, uh, several different projects abroad in Asia, um, as well as in Europe. And so um, really just, just happy to share my experience from a professional standpoint and entrepreneur, uh, and as well as uh, be a part of this panelist with Brittany. So I turned over to Brittany so she could tell us all about her life. Hi, well, um, I, I don't think that interests everybody, but hello everyone, my name is Brittany. Uh, the maybe the most interesting thing about my Rotary Youth Exchange experience is that I wasn't a Youth Exchange student. I actually was the girl sitting next to a Youth Exchange student. Um, and that is another reason or another thing that I want you guys to remember is the power of influence that you guys have wherever you go. That obviously the experience totally changes your lives, the lives of your family and the lives of your host family. But every single you know morning that you're sitting next to someone at school that that person is also affected by your by by your life and influenced by your life so i'm originally australian um and the rotary youth exchange student was a girl from japan and she sat next to me and was like hey uh do you want to come to this you know this is really boring meeting you know do you want to come and i was like well if it's boring why would i me? you know i don't want to go and then she said, no, there'll be, there'll be food. And I was like, oh, cool, okay, I'll go with you. So we went and we had lunch at a, at a Rotary Club and I was totally blown away because I thought this, at this lunch, I have learned more about life. I've learned more about business. I've learned more about society than I did ever at school. And since then I was kind of hooked. So since after that, that was when I was about 16. Um, after that, I just stayed in contact with my Rotary Club, and then I went on uh, to study uh, univer at university. And then when I was finished with my business and Japanese degree, the Rotary Club said, hey, there's this thing called a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship, which for you guys now, this is called a uh, global grant. Um, and then I went from Australia to Germany. Uh, and then after going from Australia to Germany, I made my way uh, actually back to Japan, which is where I was studying, working originally. And now I support Japanese companies and global companies in Japan uh, to do innovation. And except now I'm currently in Mexico, but this is a whole nother story, which we can to totally talk about, but there's no better place to be with people who have crazy stories apart from this webinar with you guys, because I'm sure there's lots of people from different places and in totally different places than they thought they would be. And this is the place to talk about those kinds of things. So my Rotary life has always been really passionate about alumni, engaging alumni, uh, and keeping them kind of like in the circle of Rotary and the challenges behind that, you know, why, why do people leave Rotary? How can, we, how can we keep them, you know, together? And I had an opportunity in 2017 and 2018 to uh, speak at the international convention. So I can really tell you there's a lot of Rotarians super passionate about keeping young people in the organization, but we've got a lot of work to do, so. Mm -hmm. That's me. No, I agree. I definitely agree with you. And and I and, and just for you all to know, um, as we share our experiences and our tips, our goal for today is for to understand that. Well, first, let's level set. We understand that everyone on this call is in a different part of their life, in different ways and uh, of their journey and how they perceive their future. 
Um, and so we understand that um, it's no one size fit all, okay? For whatever you want to do for your post-life after your exchange and study abroad experience, it's not a one size fit all, but we're gonna just share some nuggets that we have learned to probably help you market your exchange better, um, as well as um, how to, in the future, um, as you kind of go in the community, how you can talk about your exchange, et cetera. Uh, because, you know, just like as, as Brittany was saying, we were able to leverage some of our international experiences to help us out professionally of who we are today. You know, I know my company is a global company and I've spoken a, across the world about some of the initiatives that we do. Um, but most importantly, you know, the world is more connected than ever before today. And with the world being connected, it gives us a great opportunity for individuals like you to be able to talk about your youth exchange experience, especially as a Rotex, what you're doing now to be more marketable for this space because companies, uh, whether it's a large company or small companies are looking for talent like who's on this call today. Mm -hmm. And so our goal is just to tell you a couple nuggets. So let's go ahead and get right into it because we definitely wanna really leave about a great 20 minutes um, or so for you all to ask questions. So feel free to take notes. Um, Let's go ahead and go um, to can our first see? point. Can everyone see the screen? We're all, we're good. Yes. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so this yes, is essentially what we're good. gonna. This is what we're okay. This is great. Now I can see people. We've got some chat. Great. Okay, perfect. Um, perfect. Thank you. So what we want to do now is anyone with a question or anything like that, go ahead and type it in, and we're gonna kind of answer them all in one block. So go ahead and this is a real interactive experience. So please go ahead and share your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So. What we're going to do is begin with talking about how to identify and translate your experiences for exchange, because this is one of the biggest challenges that people say, I've had this amazing experience. I know it's changed me. I know I'm a better person because of it, but I don't know how to communicate that to somebody. I don't know how to tell an employer how that makes me special. Uh, after that, we're going to talk about scaling your experience, as in how you can then go and take that and then share it with the world. And then uh, also your connection to Rotary. And then Q&A, uh, so that we, we kind of don't want to be still presenting it like 30, at like 135. We want to be by 135. We want to be right into your question. So have your question. The Perfect. earlier you ask, the sooner we can answer your question. So we've already done that. We're good, <laughs> I think, right? Okay, let's talk. I think I know those people. <laughs> so yeah, let's, I, you know, I, I wanted to start here. And like I say, this is a conversation today. The first thing, like I said earlier, everyone has different experiences, but I want you, especially in these uncertain times, you know, we're all in, let's first recognize that we're able to breathe. You know, we have people that's impacted all around the world with this virus that has really disrupted, but also people are not safe, people are um, in, in not in good health. And so let's take a moment to be grateful that we are able to disconnect you know, and smile and, and have good spirits in the, in, in the midst of these uncertain times. So I do want to acknowledge that if you have any family members, friends, or community members that's impacted by this, go, uh, this global um, virus that's spreading, that we give them our, our great thoughts and um, send them positive vibes and keep them in our, in our thoughts as well. Um, and, I, and I hope everyone is taking measurements to keep yourself safe and healthy. Um, also, I want you to take a moment to just breathe, uh, just in the midst of all this crisis. We know Pop, some people are now, we're isolated. What the world, you know? The first thing we think of of being a youth exchange is trying to go out and do so many things and connect socially. That's the first thing we say, hey, don't say no to an experience. But we never really thought about like, wow, what if we kind of stay, we have to stay into our homes. So this has been very, very different for us. But I want you to understand that everyone has a different roadmap to how they get to their professional life and understand that your roadmap is your roadmap. And it's, I don't want you to take your roadmap and compare it to other people, because that's when you really get yourself into stressful situations, um, as well as you may um, actually disappoint yourself because you feel like hey they did it and i want to be the next you know global leader of the un you know and that's what you wanted to do but understand that number one you want to think about you know where do you want to be in these next five years you know what do you what do you want to do with your youth exchange experience what are you doing now some people are currently in school they're finishing 
their high school. Um, some people are now in college, trade school, um, or already starting the workforce. So we understand that everyone is very, very different, but you need to have a plan, right? It may not be the perfect plan. And to start with that plan is to really reflect. You wanna start with the first reflection question of what, what was the value of your youth exchange experience? What did you learn? What did you like? What did you dislike? What type of person did it change you and made you better? Hopefully it made you better uh, for your experience. But if it did not make you better, what was the things that you learned throughout those disappointing times throughout your year abroad? And you want to put those things on paper and understand your value package, right? And then you want to start thinking of, okay, professionally, where will you like to go in your next five years, your next 10 years, if you can think that long, okay? Um, and understand it's different paths. So everyone does not have to go to college. Everyone does not have to go to trade school. You could be an entrepreneur. You could be a freelancer. I, or you can do all of, all of the above <laughs> together, like Brittany and I. I mean, currently I'm an entrepreneur. I, I'm still, I'm doing my postdoc at Harvard. I'm doing a lot of stuff. So you could do it a lot and it's up to you. But understand that your path is your path, but you have to have a roadmap and you have to also understand your value. And so I, Brittany, if you could tell us a little bit more, I know you have been across the world and as you were sharing earlier, you have lived in different countries and now you've right. been able to create your own product. Uh, mm -hmm. But how, how does one go about marketing? You know, like you think about uh -huh. that value proposition, right? Yeah. But how do you kind of put that on paper and, uh -huh. and market that? Okay. Like where to start? Thanks, Todd. You're, you're so right. And when we come back from our exchange, I'm sure that every single person here felt super depressed, right? You come back and you're like, oh my God, you know, your life is really, really different than kind of like what you expected. But this is kind of really just about, you know, as Todd said, that like extraordinary experiences just bring, you know, really different kinds of feelings. So the really, the important thing is, is that in these moments of being unsure, in these moments of not knowing what to do, it's really important that you get clear for yourself what it is that you can do. And so Todd said the word value proposition. So what is a value proposition? Value proposition means what can I offer somebody, right? What can I offer somebody? What I, I hear a lot of people do. So I'm Australian, which means I speak a, one form of English. Uh, I also speak Japanese and I also speak German, right? If I go to Germany, right? So I think a lot of people, a lot of exchange students often say, uh, I want to go back to my exchange country and I want to work there, right? And then they kind of walk into Germany or they walk into France and they try to sell their French, right? You're going to lose this game because you speak French very well. You speak German very well. That's really great. But that isn't your real strength. Your real strength is always at the intersection of your skills, right? So it's not that you speak French. That's not what makes you special. What makes you special is that you speak French and English, right? Or and something else. So this is what we need to do when we're talking to employers is that don't walk in and say, I can do this one thing. I want you to look at yourself now as a whole person, as a holistic person. I want you to look at your hobbies. I want you to look at what you love, what you're good at, not just kind of what the thing is that you have in mind for your career. I want you to think really in terms of who you are as a person. And this wasn't the case probably 10 years ago. This probably wasn't even the case 20 years ago when you were applying for a job. This is what happens now. And I'll tell you why. Because we're walk we live in a world now that people have never seen before. Like what Todd said, we're all quarantined at home. This has never happened before. This has never happened before that every single, well, like at, the, at this global scale, it's never happened. The gov all the governments of the world have come together on one topic and said, everyone stay at home. This is for the best, you know, this is for people. This is for the good of the people. This has never happened before. So no boss, no manager, no one knows actually the right way because they've never trained it. So this is why it's really important that you prepare yourself because we're walking into new challenges. This world is going to look new. So this is why your experience as an exchange student, growing your soft skills, growing your hard skills, adversity, the ability to stick with something that's hard, um, but just the understanding that people think differently, feel differently, act differently is really important. Like for example, right now, we're in quarantine. Some people are fine. Some people are really not fine, you know, and other people are, you know, using this time to completely, you know, transform themselves. You understand as an exchange student that people feel differently. 
so you appreciate the benefit of diversity not only the benefits that it can bring but you also understand the other side is in you understand what it feels like to be in the minority you understand what it's like to not be understood right and this is really important uh, developing empathy for your employers so when we're developing a, a value proposition for your employer i want you to get a pen and paper or if you want to do it on your phone you can do it on your phone but i'm still like a, you know if there's something different about writing it with pen and paper what I want you to do is I want you to write down every single thing that you like doing, right? If, if it's photography, if it's cooking, if it's speaking a different language, I don't care what it is. And I want you to write that all down, everything and every single thing about you that you love doing. And then I want you to think about if you're applying for a job or if you're looking at a customer or whatever, I want you to think about what it is that they need, what's their needs, right? What's on their mind, what's in their hearts. And then I want you to look at your skill set and look at how that matches, how your skills match the needs of either the employer or whoever it is that you're, you know, that you're um, looking to serve. When we're talking about interview tips, interview tips is really the, the number one thing that I can tell you is that we first need to understand what it is that you are selling and you are selling your entire self. So you're not you as a student or you as an exchange student or you as your, you know, home culture or you as your exchange culture. You're all of that. And I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine walking on one leg, right? I want you to imagine walking on one leg. That's really tough. I think walking on one leg is probably really difficult. What we need to do is to develop two legs, right? To have at least two legs. And then if we think about animals, they have even four legs. And think about every single element of your personality, every skill is kind of like another leg, another wheel for you to keep moving. So I want you to use all of your skills the next time that you go to an interview. I want you to tell your employer that you're really good in adversity. I want you to tell your employer that you're actually very good in conflict situations because you know you understand, you know, have that people think differently. And when it comes to writing your cover letter and your resumes and your professional profile, this is where it's really important to project yourself as that holistic person. I want you to have on your LinkedIn, I want all of you to have a LinkedIn profile. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile right now, I want you after this call, I want you to create one. And then I want you to say things like that you're an exchange student. And then instead of saying just where you went, I want you to say the things you learned, that you learned how to speak French or you learned how to speak German, but I also want you to say things like you learned that, you know, people act differently and you learned that culture is very different. So in terms of marketing your international experience to employers, there's two really important things we need to do. One is I want you to define your value proposition, you, 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 what it is that you do the best. Uh, and then I want you to think about what they need, right? So those two things, and then we want to tell it in a full story. And then we move on. Once we've done that and we understand that, you know, we have our value proposition, we're telling our story, now is the time to talk about it, right, Todd? And that's, you know, through ways yeah. like networking. No, I agree. No, that I love this. I love this piece that you're saying that is your story and you have to understand your values and, and you have to be able to write that out. Because if you don't understand these these preliminary things of your foundation, how will you tell that story? How will you articulate that? Um, especially when you're interviewing and employers, what they want to know, they want to know your action. They want to know the situations that you are in, your responsibilities, but most importantly, your impact and your results. That's what employers are looking for. And so you can't just go around and say, hey, my youth exchange experience was amazing. That's what I always get. Hey, how was your experience? Amazing, Todd. It was excellent. I had so much fun. Okay, that's great. So the first thing that comes in their mind when you say that to an employer is like, oh, they just had a great vacation. <laughs> and that's and, and some people who never went to study abroad, don't forget everyone does not get this opportunity. So they may not be able to connect when you say, hey, I lived abroad or I did Rotary Youth Exchange. So you have to position your value you know, as a scholar, as a study abroad participant, and also understand the business outcomes of your experience and your competencies um, and your skill set, hard skills and soft skills. And that's what the things that Brittany was saying, a part of your value proposition that you can um, also put on your, your resume. And so it takes us in two, because once you understand and you put your framework on paper, now you're able to articulate that and tell your story. You can gather your elevator speech, right? And that's, if you guys have never heard of like the elevator pitch or just imagine yourself on an elevator, you only have like 10 floors to go up with the executive that you may see that's really less than 30 seconds. And so how will you be able to articulate 
your message other than like, hey, my name is Todd. Like you're gonna have to really say something, right? And so it helps you kind of form your, your top three to four sentences that you wanna articulate wherever they may be. So that takes us into networking one-on-one, right? So when you go around, it's a make, that's one thing I love about Rotary. It creates a global platform. You have a global community, right? Mm -hmm. And so you got to leverage your global community so you can, you know, so you can also not only serve, but also get new opportunities. The new, well, right now our current theme for this year is Rotary Connects the World. This Zoom conversation is essentially how Rotary connects the world. But our next year theme with on the Holger is Rotary Open Opportunities. And so this is how we open opportunities if you know how to leverage and network after this Zoom call. And this is what I've seen from students is that students do not know how to follow up after a networking event. So a lot of people get the opportunities. First, you got to have the strength and the passion to go to an event, right? So you got to get out of bed, comb your hair and go do something and, and go to this event mm -hmm. and smile and meet people. But I think you all can do that pretty well. And I think we have, it's a culture, especially in Rotary. <laughs> Everyone give these, uh, you know, we all give our business cards. I mean, I have so many cards. I'm like, Lord, if I get another card from Rotary, I think mean, it's just so many. So we do that well. So I'm not going to talk so much about that. But what I will talk about is understanding your brand and how to follow up. So think about this. I think McDonald's is a, a food company that's pretty, a restaurant that's, or fast food that's global. Mm -hmm. So think about it. When you all think about McDonald's, I want you to write in chat, write in the chat, what's the first image come to your mind? When you think about McDonald's, what's the first thing come to your mind? What's the image that come to your mind? Put it in the chat for me. The first image that comes to your Food, mind. Food, burger, golden arches, M, the M, diabetes. <laughs> diabetes, yeah. Right. But you think about it, right? Okay, so I'm I want you all it. to look at these comments, right? Now, when you think about Google, when you think of Google, what's the first image come to your mind? Write it in the chat. What's the first thing come to your mind? Food, when you think search, about Google? colorful, browser, lube, thieves, cookie, search, lot. Search. So you, so you, these are like global branding, global brands, and you can, and we can go down the list, like, you know, Walt Disney World or certain companies. But when I ask students, when you think of your name, what brand or what image come to mind? Most of my students cannot write down one image. Mm -hmm. They write down words or, you know, but, you know, I'm pretty sure if I say, when you think of Bowtie Todd, <laughs> what comes to mind? I, well, I actually don't write your comments. Lion King. Lion, <laughs> King. Lion King. You know, you may see bow tie or something, but I want you to understand that if you, this is important about networking and this whole deal, if you don't learn how to create your brand, someone else will. Right. And you have to understand how you're going to create that brand. And that's what brings us into networking. Because if you are not aware of your brand and how it's being perceived, when you're networking, your net may not be working. Seriously, it may not be working because you're not controlling your narrative. And, and I'm going to end with this before we go to the next point. How you help create those things is not only understanding who you are, your value proposition and where you're going, also understanding your audience and also how you for, for facilitate your brand. So social media, right? We all are connected in the virtual world and it can hurt us or it can help us. Mm -hmm. especially in the youth exchange world because during our youth exchange experience we connect with our friends and you know we want to vlog about our experiences and we want to tell the world how great this youth exchange experience is but also we know we had some people in our programs that probably vlog around the, the wrong stuff you know mm -hmm. if, if you know what i mean as well as they want to highlight the, the the wrong the wrong things well, I wouldn't say the wrong things, but they want to impress their peers. So they create a TikTok. They do the social media challenges about, you know, I'm going to chug five beers right now. Well, I want you all to understand that may be fun in that moment, but that's a part of your professional brand now because it's now out there. So I want you to understand that I'm not telling you to do it or not do it, but I just want you to know that that's all a part of your branding. And if you don't control what you put out, you know, it's going to give your viewers the perception of how they want to frame your brand. And that's important online or in person. 
Um, mm -hmm. So she talked about LinkedIn. Everyone on here, it, it is a homework assignment. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, create one. That is if how companies are If you don't know recruiting. how to make it, let's we can reach out to us. Reach yes, out we to can, us. We it's can, that we important. Can go and look at your LinkedIn and give you some tips. We'll give you a tip sheet and everything. So just be careful. That's all I want you to understand. Be careful and guard your brand as well as if you don't tell your story, someone else will. So when you mm -hmm. go to events, open your mouth and, and talk to people. And last but not least, follow up. If you get a card, email someone within the next three to seven days and say, hey, it was nice meeting you at such and such event. Connect with them on LinkedIn. That is the piece that a lot of people mm -hmm. miss. So yeah. make sure you follow up to ensure that you're networking. Would you, would you agree, Brittany, uh, like, uh, about more of... Especially, and what is your tips and trades of like, if you follow mm -hmm. up with somebody after a conference, yeah. mm -hmm. is there anything that you recommend that people kind of highlight? Absolutely. So the first thing, maybe also Todd, while we're, while we're chatting, if you wanted to post our LinkedIn profiles in the chat as well, maybe yeah. that gives people like a reference. Yes, um, so exactly. who here, maybe can I say in the chat, well, who says like, you know what, I want to re reach out to people but i don't know what to say who's in like i want to but i don't know how can you let us know in the chat be like yeah that's me i'm not sure i'm not really sure yeah what like i'm not really sure what does it mean yeah totally me okay um there's two ways to go about it the the thing is the the number one thing that I, that maybe what i think what, moving forward with linkedin that i want you to change in your mind is you don't need a job to work you do not need a job to work. What does that mean? That means that I want you to find somebody that you connect with. Maybe it's like a company or maybe that's a person. And I want you to tell them, I, you know, I, this is what I can do for you. Right. I want you to spend the time. I want you to look in uh, to be, what it is that they do. And I want you to think about how you can help them. And why is this important? It's important because I want you to think about if you guys were to ask somebody out, I don't know if you guys like still do it. Or if you just do it by DMs, I don't know. But like the young people these days, like still ask people out like on a date, like, do you go like, you want to like go out with me? Like, do you do that? Is that a thing? Do young people still do that? Let's pretend they do. Right? I don't Let's think pretend. they do that. I think they, I think they, they match. You, that, you match so on the app. Match? Is that, that, that it? Like, on a... <laughs> yeah. But like, then you match, but then you have to ask, then you have to go out. Right. So let's just say you've matched. Right. And then you go out. Right. I want you to think about like, imagine if you said to somebody, Hey, I'm looking for a girlfriend or I'm looking for a boyfriend. And, um, yeah, so I'm looking for a girlfriend, looking for a boyfriend. Do you want to go out with me? You'd be like, no, like, I'm not interested in you. You want someone that says, you know what, like Todd or Brittany, you know what, it's because of these things and I really like you and, you know, do you want to go out with me? So the more that you, I feel like you're talking to me, the more likely I am to respond to you, right? So this is really important. So it's the same thing when we go into, in, in our professional world. I want you to, I don't want you to begin with, I'm looking for a job. Guess what? That's not your employer's problem. That's your problem that you're looking for a job. What you will need to do is change your language. Change your language to, I have these skills that I would like to offer to you, right? This is what I want to do. This is what I want to offer to you. So here's an example. Say that I speak, let's, I'm going to use ones that I don't speak, right? Let's say I speak Chinese and French. I don't speak Chinese. I would, let's say I'm French and I went to China. So I learned, or Taiwan, because I don't think we are allowed to send students in China. Um, I would then go to, for example, what like Utah is doing. I would go to the uh, the embassy, like either to the, one of the embassies or to the Chamber of Commerce, and you can download lists of businesses. You can download the lists of businesses or the members of this association. Download their lists and go through each business one by one and look at which business that you think that you'd like to work at. And then I want you to tell them, hey, this is what I can do. I'm good at social media marketing, or I'm a writer, or I'm a video photographer. And then I want you to offer your services to this company. I don't want you to say you're looking for a job. I just want you to say that you're, look, that you're offering your services. And then allow your offer to develop into an opportunity. You don't know if they can you know, employ you or not. That's not important. What's important is begin a relationship and then see how that can then transform. Um, you know, it's always about the end. It's not, do I speak, you know, you know, Chinese or French? It's like, I speak Chinese and French, right? Which brings us into the service above self-leadership. One thing I often hear from our youth exchange students is, I need a break from youth exchange. I need a break from Rotary or I need to figure my life out or whatever. I can tell you right now 
the way to figure out your life is through Rotary. That is the way to figure out your life because we often think, I don't know what to do with my life. I'm super like, don't know what to do. I'll give you a very personal story. This is like hot off the press information. So, uh oh, uh oh, I'm here. <laughs> get ready, buckle your seatbelt. So, I am Australian. My fiance is Mexican. We were like, okay, let's go to Mexico for the uh, for the holidays. So, we went to Mexico for January, right? So, we went to Mexico for January. Uh, we usually live in Japan. That's where our business is. And then our business, obviously, with the coronavirus, all of our sessions, because we do a lot of work face to face. Um, uh, all of our face-to-face -face sessions got moved to the end of the year. So we were like, okay, we have like two or three months completely free. And now I'm in Mexico and I don't really speak Spanish. I can order tacos, but that's really about it. <laughs> My value proposition for the longest time has always been, I'm Brittany who speaks German, Japanese, and English, and I can provide innovation to companies. This has always been my value proposition. I then find myself this month, in Mexico thinking, oh my gosh, how can I provide value? What can I do? And you know what the first thing that I did was? I went back to my roots. And my roots are rotary. My roots are rotary. And about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I got one I saw that everyone was like canceling their their clubs. Like, oh, you know, like we're gonna cancel our meeting because you know we we can't meet and blah blah. And I thought, why? And then I posted on Facebook and I was like, why why is everyone canceling their clubs? Let's just move it online. From that, a Rotarian writes to me, then says, Brittany, I think that's a good idea. Let's do a Zoom call and we can show people how to set up a Zoom account. I was like, that's an awesome idea, Mark. Let's do it. He and I get online. First week, we had 11 people on the call. Five people on the call. The second week, we invite Todd's father, Jeffrey Cataract, to the call. <laughs> <laughs> My pops. <laughs> he, 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 he joins and we have 100 people. We maxed out at 100 people, right? After that, he says, I'm going to invite Mark Maloney the next week. Within three weeks, I go for zero, zero, zero idea. What am I supposed to do with my life? Oh my God, I'm in Mexico. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, you know, my fiance has a job, but like, you know, all of my work is like online. What am I supposed to do? I don't know. Totally unsure. Even still now, Todd and I still have these moments. It's not like you ever really figured out. The only thing that you do do is that you have your, you have your tools, you know exactly what to do. And I knew when I felt lost, I knew I had to go back to my roots, which is Rotary, right? I went back for, within three weeks. I go for zero to, we, ha, we were on the, we were on a call with, a, with, pre, with Rotary International President Mark Maloney. We had 450 people on the call. And in these three weeks, I had so much clarity and I felt so good that I was like, I know what it is that I can do now. And this translated back into my business um, where I was like, oh, I know what to do now. I know how to serve my clients better. I know how to communicate better. And it's only because I didn't think, oh, I don't have time. For, I don't have time for Rotary. I have to work in my business. I did the opposite. I was like, let me make time for Rotary so I become my best self so that I can be my best self in my business. This is the, this is the point. This is the, the line. This is how it works. And so when we say, why go back to Rotary? It's because in the service of self that we find each other, it's in the service of self, in above yourself or somebody else, that you become your better person. Because when I'm wearing my rotary pin and I'm like out in public, I promise you, like I don't cross the road if there's like a red man. I like wait because I have my rotary pin on. Whereas if I don't have my rotary pin on, sometimes like I cross. Like rotary is reminds me to be my best self. And I know it's true for all of you guys as well. So this is why I want you, oh, you had a good time. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you liked it. Um, so this is what it's about. It's about how do we find ways for you to keep going, stay engaged and live your best life. And this is living life on your terms and living life in the service of others. And on, on that, Todd, what do you say that we open up our, open up questions? We have a few people that have raised their hands. Guys, do you have any questions now? Now's the time. You can add in the chat. We're also on Instagram. So if you have questions there, go ahead. Um, and that's it. All right. So let me go back. I know. I, I definitely agree with you as you as we get this question. Did you? Hey, go ahead. I'm sorry. You want to say something? No, no, no. Uh, I wanted to say something. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Can you, can you go back to the uh, slide uh, before this? Which one? Uh, the last, uh, second last slide. Like this one? Yeah. 
I just want this to one. Uh, uh, the conference and events. Conference and events. Uh huh. The fifth one. Which is then this one. Yeah. Uh, networking. Uh huh. So I just want to say something that Rotex, RY community, and Rotarians have a lot of conferences and events around mm -hmm. the year. So keep on following up on the various channels we have so that you're updated with national conferences, regional con like uh, European conferences, and so that you can network a lot. And something out of Rotary world, if you're in a university, participate in student groups, uh, like uh, athletic groups or different uh, language groups, uh, uh -huh. groups, investment banking group, something like that, so that sure. you, have, you are working in those communities, like in okay. open groups. So we've started with, a, a, like an easy question, Todd. How do we deal with rejection? I think you mean neglect. By Albert, I think you mean like rejection, right? Regret, like rejection, neglect. Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Let's start off with an easy one, shall we? <laughs> yeah, that, I got you. Oh, okay. And yeah, you can go to the last slide because um, I don't think I have any other points either. Okay. But I, I do. Uh, no. So I, I think first, you know, everyone, everyone deals with rejection and failure differently, differently mm -hmm. very much differently. And, you know, and I would say that, you know, I don't want to give you a general, you know, this so high level of, you know, as far as like, this is what you should do. But I, I, I'm, I, let me acknowledge first is that rejection is real. Okay. And it, it and it, and it's, how you look at rejection and how you perceive mm -hmm. it and how you bounce back at the rejection because mm -hmm. rejection does not mean that your life is over like rejection does not mean that you're not good enough you're about you're not valuable um you still have all those things that it probably means that it was a it was kind of what i consider a blessing in disguise it was probably something that was not a uh, i would I, I would say a good fit uh, but mm -hmm. the deal is, is that the world is so large and that one moment does not define your entire rest of mm -hmm. your future professional life. And so I say first, acknowledge what happened, but also and reflect and, and don't beat yourself up that, to say so much of a, it's all about you, you, you that messed up, messed up. It's, it's so many factors. But when you have rejections from employers, um, that's, I can speak in those ones, you probably want to ask for feedback. So you may want to reach back out and, and ask them, you know, is there anything that I can improve on? Is there anything that I could have done differently? Um, as well as, you know, because it could, it could be some opportunities for you to strengthen your skills. Maybe it was an interview question that you did not articulate at the, you know, or mm -hmm. convey the messaging that you wanted. So always seek feedback and also reflect. But I will mm -hmm. always say, don't stay there too long. You know, keep moving, moving because that was just a moment. And it wasn't your entire, um, it's not your entire future. Yeah. The, Brittany, and what's, all, what's your thoughts? Yeah. So the, the first thing that I would do is to understand how I feel about this, like how I feel about being rejected. Do I, do I feel like, how does it affect me? That's the first thing is to understand your, like your, your own feelings. And sometimes, you know, one of the reasons is because it, it you know, sets off a trigger in you. Um, that maybe is already there. You know, maybe you were like kind of scared. I didn't feel I was good enough. And then you get rejected and you're like, see, I told you. So rather than that, what I want you to do is think about what is something concrete that I can do in this situation, right? So for example, if you don't get a job, for example, if you don't get a job offer, if you do something like that, um, think about are there any courses that you can take online for free? Are there any YouTube videos that you can watch that you can get better, right? Because we, we don't want to get bitter. We always want to get better. But if you get rejected by like a friend or like your boyfriend or your girlfriend or anything like that, I'm, I need you to move straight on, keep on like forging ahead, you know? So there's, a, there's all different kinds of rejection. And then also think about why is this person rejecting me? You know, if it's like, if it's a job offer, they pr there's, it's probably not personal. You know what I mean? They're probably not like, oh, well, you know, I they have something, a personal vendetta, right? But if someone's like rejecting you and it's like a, it's a personal rejection, um, then I think uh, Todd's, Todd's point of blessing in disguise is, is the way to deal with that one. So we have some other questions. Can you discuss the process of new generations? How's it different from our way? It's not that different. It's just- Yeah, I can, um, I can actually talk about uh -huh. that if you want. Brittany, so the thing is, let's try to get, let's ahead. manage, let's manage questions that you can find the information online versus like, information that maybe we can get but does that make sense mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so I, yeah, I agree. And I'm looking at some of these questions. So, so just kind of running through it. Um, Anna, you will, we will put the slides out as a recap. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you approach a new Rotary Club. I always think that's pretty, you go on Youth Exchange and then you move and you mm -hmm. go into a different environment, a different community, and you're like, mm -hmm. man, these they around, and how do we go and get involved with a Rotary Club that does not do a youth exchange or understand who Rotex um, mm -hmm. are and what we're about? And so I think the, the number one thing is, how do you approach another club is really just reach out, go on Facebook, go to their website, send an email, um, that's where it starts, and say, hey, you know, I'm alumni of the Rotary Youth Exchange Program, um, and I and I look forward to coming to learn more about your club. Yeah. Don't and ask also for go permission. with a friend as well. Maybe go with a friend <laughs> if, if you want. Go with a friend as well. Like yeah, I I, I, I would say don't ask for permission. Don't say hey, can I come to your club meeting? <laughs> no, what you yeah. say is, just go. Hey, I am I'm an here. alumni yeah, yeah. member. Yes, and I and I want to know when you like to meet. And and yeah, you show up. And so I think that's how you approach it. Uh, I'm not going to take much time, but if you ever have a challenge approaching new clubs, I know Let us different know. countries have different yeah. cultures, but you can always reach out to Brittany or I, and we can help you with that. Yeah. So we have a question from Abby Smith. Can you touch on the international job market with the uncertainty and unemployment opportunities? Do you have any thoughts on the potential if opportunities with jobs abroad? Yeah. Number one, you got to wait. You got to wait right now. If you, if, you, if you say, if you start applying for jobs, this isn't going to work. So guys, does waiting mean sit at home watching Netflix? No, 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 no. You're doing exactly what it is that you need to do. Use the time that you're at home to get better. The things that, the things that I would encourage you to do is that when the kind of the crisis is over, that you have like souvenirs from that time. What do I mean by that? I mean like if you, if you can do a certificate, uh, if you can write or do something that like doesn't cost any money, stuff like writing a LinkedIn article, writing, you know, be, starting a blog, stuff like that and be like, you know, let's just say you're passionate about international relations between your country and your host country, but eat within that you're super passionate about AI or you're super passionate about computers or you're super passionate about like travel or something, right? I want you to talk about the current situation and how that affects the two countries, or I want you to begin, you know, you can open your first, um, you know, your first, you know, like for example, if you're thinking about how to get a job, you prob what you could do is you you can speak as like an employee as what it's like as an employee. So you can say things like ten things millennials or no, you guys are like Gen Z or whatever. Like ten things like young people look for, you know, in 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 a new in the world of work or something like that. And then managers read that because like, oh, I wonder what young people think. You're like this is this is a thing. So use this time as much as possible to prepare so that when time does come, like you're ready to go. That would be my yeah, and I, and I And I would say this to add on to the international market. Uh, that's my doggy. Uh, I was Merlin, literally going to like mute the person, but it's I'm you. I'm I'm I know you. it's me. I'm going to be quiet. Hello. <laughs> so this is, so anyone on Insta Live can hear Todd yelling at his dog though. So this is the, this is the thing. Stay patient, but stay active. They're, like being patient does not mean being passive. Stay active so that when, like, I'll give you an example. I had a university professor write me a couple months ago, like, hey, Brittany. Uh, no, firstly, I wrote him because he, he works at a large publishing um, uh, network. And I wrote him and I was like, hey, you know, are you interested? Uh, like, I've written some things on design thinking and innovation in Japan. Maybe you're interested. You can share it with, like, your market. And he's like, no, 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 I'm not. Like, we can't do that. So I said, okay, rejection. And I was like, okay, no, no problem. Well, if there's anything I can help you with, let me know. Literally three weeks later, he messages me and says, do you have anything on this particular, like, aspect of innovation in Japan? And because I had continuously been writing continu on the thing that I love. So I'm not asking you to do something you don't love. I want you to think about the thing you love and I want you to write about it. And because he asked me, can you send it? And because I'd been active in the time when it was, everyone else was passive, I had something ready to send. And he was like, thank you. You know, so you've got to always, I want you to constantly be building that inventory. So when anyone asks anything, you're like, boom, there you go. Boom, there you go. And this costs nothing. It only costs your time. And right now we got nothing but time. So Todd, now you've tamed your- yeah, I know my, my dog may still, he, get, he wants to like talk to us as well. But no, I, I agree that, um, 
this is what we deal with every day, this new normal. Uh, but um, I agree with what you're saying is that this is not the time for you to sit down and just chill out on your on your skill. I will I will really encourage you all to continue to to be innovative and creative. It is a downpour right now, you know, because of the uncertainty. So businesses are really trying to protect you know, from their PL mm -hmm. standpoint, their profit and loss profit and their losses. revenue stream. Yeah. So, however, don't give up because it's going to be an uptick. And, 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 and when it becomes an uptick, people are going to be hiring like mm -hmm. crazy, hopefully. Uh, and, and so you can position yourself to be ready, like Brittany said, mm -hmm. but some essential operations are still happening around the world, you know? So you think about those skills and those companies that you don't typically think about, right? Like, you know, the, the health professionals, the mm -hmm. truck drivers, uh, the people who really keep the economy moving, they're still hiring. And you, yeah. you can probably actually do some innovative things with those entities and those nonprofits that's running in front of you and um, continue to build your business acumen and your resume. Also, you can think of a project that you can explore right mm -hmm. now in the midst of these times that you can also um, include on your um, on your resume. So and Todd, don't use this time to us? sit back. Um, no. I would still say be aggressive. And right, and what Go does ahead, it tell Brittany? us? It tells us you don't stop looking for a job and find a way to offer your services. Right, servant leadership. Let's go back to how you can be of help to someone. If you knock on somebody's door at a time of need and ask for something, they're gonna remember you as that person that was, you know, came with the absolute worst timing. Like, have you ever, you know, had that friend that you're like at a party or something, and you have someone said something terrible to you, and like you're crying, and you have this like friend come over to you and be like, hey, can you? And you're like, can you see I'm not okay? You know what I mean? Like, have you guys ever had that experience? So uh, what I want you to do is think about how you can be of service, how you can help. Oh my gosh, Logan answered Thomas's call. Logan's on the call. Oh, yeah. Logan. Hey, Logan. He's Logan is the he's he's a, he's great. You he's can also follow him on Instagram for food. at Youth Exchange at Rotary for, International. So reach out to Logan for food. For if you have story. any if you have any questions. <laughs> but I do think to this are some um, suggestions on future key skills that's it for 2030. You know, of course, what we can see in the next 10 years um, is some of the things that's brewing right now. Some essential for operations that I perceive is definitely, you know, who's going to have the competitive advantage? Global mm -hmm. applicants. Individuals yeah. who can set their self aside with a global lens because of how the global economy has continued to develop, as well as essential skills around innovation God, and, and doing something bigger bit you know yeah agile you know making sure that you're able to do something very quickly and change management because a lot of organizations are really wanting to stay relevant with the time and your generation is the one who's transforming the way businesses are thinking so yeah. in the next 10 years if you learn what you created from your generation and master those those are what the employers are going to be mm -hmm. wanting. That's why they want your, uh, you know, what you bring to the table. And I think your international experience, I think I saw this question earlier. They said that, hey, Rotarians say that this youth exchange experience is so great, you know, for long term, but how, cause, how does it benefit me now in the short term? Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to that because I, I think that's, some, that's a question that some people uh, want to ask and they're scared to, you know, ask. And you're right. It does benefit at you in the long term and you have to also understand how it benefits you short term because you're and i hope that you're a better person because of the youth exchange experience and you have a global community you have a global family so that's benefit right your network is larger than your average colleague and peer experience or a negative experience you have yeah. that global network the next the next piece of the global network now you have global operator or rotates international or join rotary clubs now you have opportunities to not only network but you can also pursue you know other things of your interest whether it's personally as a passion of service or professionally as a trade or something how should i oh i'm sorry i would like to present to um this i'm sorry it said i would like to present myself to rotary international to organize how can i organize a youth program so what you can do Logan. is first yeah i was about to Logan. say yeah, just Logan can help you 
<laughs> yeah, I was about to say you could jo- you get involved, but Logan is a, a great resource All right, for right. anything around youth. So we Correct. got six minutes. We got six minutes left. So we're gonna do like a fire session right now. So if anyone's got any questions, go and Todd and I will give like like our absolute like short sharp sharp answers, right? So I have one. Uh, Todd, what's the best tactic to maintain momentum on a project? For me, be patient. Know that you know that this is simply just like one time. It's not gonna be forever. And the second thing is to to still be like optimistic and and positive. Like if you call your client or like your friend or you know you apply for a job, like things are really tough. I want a job. People are like Ugh, I don't want to talk to this person. You know, like try to stay positive. And you know, a way to stay positive is to be thankful we're alive. You know, like Todd said. You know, we're still breathing. Okay, I agree. And, and if you can, you can get involved with any local Rotary clubs right now. You can join an e-club, passport club. Yeah. So if you think my money is the one that's keeping you from Rotary Club, um, look, look up, look up that online. You can join a satellite club. So I just want to make sure you guys understand how you can still get connected. And it's a great way to connect right now since a lot of clubs are doing virtual Zooms yeah. uh, and doing things that we was trying to help them to do, <laughs> help them do 50 years ago. And I'm just kidding. Todd, what changed your, life about, you, what changed your life about you? About youth exchange? What changed your life? I think the, you know, my, you know, I think once again, it's the global community. Youth exchange mm-hmm. is allow for me to continue to stay connected to the world. And, and I think when you have a global mindset on anything you do in life, it really helps you become a better person. So mm-hmm. for me, that's, that's personally for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Do we have any so I think, you know, we're, we're at the last, we're at the last four minutes, but I do, I would love to see. Um, okay. Well, actually, you know what, Brittany, what if we go yeah. ahead and do a quick wrap up? Yeah. Um, and just kind of highlight, you know, what we talked about today, just kind of reminder, mm-hmm. uh, we talked about how you can really understand who your value proposition and high level, how to market it, some of the things to think about, you know, yeah. we only had a quick 30 minutes to have a discussion today. So uh, I understand that you still have to do things beyond this Zoom conversation. Um, uh-huh. and we want to continue the conversation. And so with that being said, uh, reach out to Brittany or I anytime, but you want, I would love for you to join your local Rotex organization. Uh, We're going to turn it back over to our moderator to tell us how to be connected. But we want to remind you all in the midst of these uncertain times, service, service above self and compassion and empathy is more important and essential to us than ever before. So we want you to stay, you know, stay relevant. Um, and people ask us all the time, what can we do in these times? Serve, serve your way through this, you yes. know? And so we are so happy and thank you Rotex International for inviting us to be a part of your first webinar series. Right. And it's, it's true. It's true in both your personal life and it's true in your professional life and it's true in your rotary, in your rotary life. Let's know that things are unclear right now. That's totally fine. Respect how you're feeling, understand how you're feeling, reflect on it. Um, but also the clarity that you're looking for, what do I want to do with my life? What, you know, what's going on? What about right now? This whole situation looks so, so unclear. Always find a way to help. Helping somebody else will always help you be the best person. And your best person is the one that comes up with good ideas. Not the person that's sitting on the couch being like, oh my gosh, I'm really nervous. What am I going to do? This person doesn't have good ideas. Your best person has ideas. And that best person is always found in the service of others. So like I can only um, just second what Todd said. It was an absolute pleasure to be with you guys. If anyone has any questions, needs like anything, moral support, whatever, you can follow Todd or I uh, on Instagram. Um, that's probably the best way. Cause I'm like, I have a TikTok account guys, but I'm like, I don't really, I don't really know, I, I you do, know, yeah, my, do you know what I mean? But like, I, I can do, inter- I feel like, do you know what I feel? I feel like <laughs> Rotarians being like, I have a Facebook, you can contact me on Facebook. Ah, oh, shit. Like Tanya said to me the other day, oh, don't make me up with my Insta, you know? That's how I feel about TikTok. I'm like, I have Insta, but oh, shit, I don't know about TikTok. So write us on TikTok, uh, TikTok, no, 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 Instagram. If there's anything that we can do, but like, you know, and you can even just see how we live our lives as well and how we get through uh, challenges. So, you step back to you to wrap up our hour together. I would like to thank you, Brittany and Todd. It was an amazing webinar. I'm pretty sure our attendees have enjoyed it and learned a lot. And thank you again. I would like to uh, end by saying thank you for attending and taking so much interest in these topics. Uh, we are going to be organizing more webinars in the coming weeks. 
please follow us on our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and we'll be continuously updating the new webinars. For now, we are also planning to do one on in, uh, inbound service project. It's a project that we are taking from one district and taking it to the international level. Yeah. And I want to see your LinkedIn profiles, guys. Send me your LinkedIn profiles, guys. Likewise. I want to see them. I please want to see them. With me on Instagram, LinkedIn, they're the best connections to have. They can guide you a lot. And please contact us at Rotex International if you want to start a new club, if you want to locate a new club or uh, lo locate an existing club. And please contact us if you have any topics that you want us to work on during this time. We understand. Yeah. This was the best. I love this. I love this. Sorry, so before again. we leave, I know, I know if you got to log off, we understand. But we want to tell people that Rotex International, what they're doing is that they're going to try to do these webinars. We're the first ones to do this, um, but they're going to be doing things like this um, for like at least once a quarter or a couple of times out of the year. So if you have any ideas you want to see or what you think could be relevant yeah. to your Rotex club or your life, you have a Rotex club. And if you like, uh, if you want Brittany, I, or, uh, or Rotex International team to come and do something for your Rotex club virtually hit us up. We don't mind. The deal is, is just, and I love what someone said, is that the tools are right in front of us. We are the tools. Everyone in this call, we are the resources that help this yeah. world move. But if we don't understand how to do it, then we could be lost. But together, conversations like this will help us get there. So thanks again. That's my closing. I'm going to turn it back over to you for real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's it you know it's literally just like a it's a conversation this is think about this as the beginning not the end uh, and understand that any un, that uncertain feelings you're having right now know that the way to work through those is together with Rotarians with us you feel better after this call right in the chat right now if you feel better For, right now if you feel better about life yes right yes right now in the chat if you feel better about life right now nothing changed nothing changed in this hour in life nothing changed right nothing nothing changed corona didn't change people still you know dying in the streets is crazy but people feel better because you hang out with rotarians you hang out with people that have the same values of you it makes you feel good when you feel good you get have the energy do something right so you feel better about life remember staying involved with rotary makes you feel good about your life that's yes love you thanks <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, all the attendees. Let's stay in touch, and we are looking forward to growing with you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Have a great See Friday. See you online. Bye, guys. Bye. Bruce was here. Bye. Yeah, Bruce. Yeah. Bye, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Helen. It's so many good friends. Everybody was on. Did I don't want to close the chat. If I close the chat, you'll can yeah, you hang up I'm because so I have to. I I'm gonna I'm gonna hang up first, right? We're gonna you hang up first. I'm gonna hang up first, guys. All right. Bye. Hey.